This weekly podcast inspires you to step outside of your comfort zone. My name is Zakir Muhammad, and I'm your host of the Living Legacy Podcast. I am a cancer survivor, brand cultivator strategist, author, and world traveler. This Living Legacy Podcast features women of purpose sharing stories of resilience. They are single and married. They are artists and entrepreneurs who run businesses and juggle parenthood. If you are ready to hear interviews about professionalism, entrepreneurship, travel, life, and love, you are in the right place. They will share stories of how they overcame adversity while seeing life through a different lens. Let's get into it. I want you to just tell me in your own words also of what do you do? So that's a good question. Um, I started off as an elementary school teacher. So I, I've taught kindergarten all the way through sixth grade. Um, I've been a substitute teacher and a full-time teacher. I've even been the school librarian. And I absolutely have always loved early education. Um, when I was 40 years old, my grandfather, um, third wife passed away and I was allowed back into his high rise and I found a manuscript my grandfather had written and it just opened my eyes to so many generations of mental health issues. Um, My grandfather jumped from his high rise when I was just 16 years old. And so for 24 years, I had wondered how could somebody who seemingly had everything, including physical health and family and money in the bank and just surrounded by friends and, and just, it, it made no sense to me. So I found this manuscript and for a few years, I, I just ruminated on it and, and, and thought, okay, well, I know there is a story here. Um, there was a lot missing, but what ended up happening is I decided to become my grandfather's ghostwriter and I ended up rewriting his story and realizing that I had a story as well to tell. And it's a book that I, um, have not birthed to the world because the time has is, has not been right, and I'm still working on it. But it's really been an incredible journey because it helped me understand my generational traumas and four suicides in my family, and my mom is bipolar, and so both of my grandparents died by suicide, and I just did not want to pass this on to my daughters. So what I started doing was writing essays, and those essays – um, put me in touch with people that asked me to be guests on their podcasts. And I realized what an amazing platform it is, right? I know you would agree. And I decided, you know what? Everybody has family secrets and everybody, whether they're dealing with some form of mental health issues or someone else is dealing with some form of mental health issues, we all have it in our family. And by talking about it, we're ridding the stigma and the shame, you know, by, of course, sharing personal stories, which, which is exactly what you're doing. Um, it's just been so valuable and helpful to get the message out that there is understanding and hope and compassion for others. And by just, again, ridding stigma and shame, we can really move forward. So I started my own podcast, which is called Dear Family, and I interview other people. And I also um, blog and write um, essays still and intermit my interviews with some short solo podcasts. In addition, I am certified through NAMI, which stands for the National Alliance on Mental Illness. And I've had the honor and pleasure of going into high schools and middle schools and even speaking to families for this program called Ending the Silence, where we teach students and staff and families to identify warning signs uh, and offer resources. NAMI is amazing. It's a free organization that offers all these services. It's, it started off as grassroots and now it's across the country and it's NAMI.org and anyone can look at it. But basically, I call myself a mental health advocate now and it's been such an amazing journey that I'm now getting to podcast weekly and for example, me- meeting people like yourself. It's, it's, it's really been an incredible journey for me. 
thank you so much for being a guest on a Living Legacy podcast today, Rachel. How are you? I'm really well. Thank you so much for having me. And I would say I'm really well considering, right? We're all dealing with this shelter at home situation. Absolutely. And it's difficult for some. I'm good. You know, just like we're definitely going to talk about mental health today because just like uh, sure. many other people, a lot of people will be struggling with mental health and but I'm okay I'm with family I'm in this small country so it's sunshine and I can step outside and still self-isolate exactly I, I thank goodness for the sunshine what was so interesting about us connecting is that we I've come to find out I mean we had connected anyway and naturally just gravitated toward each other but the more I found out about you and was studying your bio and saw your recent featured press, I was like, wait a minute, we have very similar uh, stories. So, of course, I do have my memoir that I just recent, recently released called Seeing Life Through a Different Lens, and even there's a small section in there about mental health. But ironically, um, my parents also have been married three times, and they've also just had stories that I feel are worth sharing. I mean, of course, starting off with whatever platform possible, whether that's blogging or podcasting, but I feel like the longevity of it essentially would be uh, beautiful in a book, I would say. So we have a lot of similarities and I definitely love the fact that you're open to share, you know, sharing it. And I just want to congratulate you on putting out your memoir. That is quite a feat. And and I'm so impressed. So congratulations on that. Thank you. That's really wonderful. And I and I love the name of your podcast because what you and I are both doing is we are we're we're this is a legacy that we're sharing. That that's one of the great things about podcasting is that it can live forever. Absolutely. And I feel like it's also been a healing process for me. The book. And the podcast and any writing that I do has also been a part of the healing process. Would you say the same for you? Absolutely. I am, I am nodding my head. Yes, absolutely. This has been my own therapy. Um, and as you know, by touching others and helping others, it, it is one of the best gifts you could give to yourself. Absolutely. Now, what other things do you feel help you to heal? Because of course, being a mental health advocate, it's almost as if, you know, same thing as being a parent. You give, 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 but what about giving the same love and care and concern to yourself? So what else helps you along the way? Well, I, I want to say a, a big lesson that I learned has been forgiveness. Um, I think that if you hold on to anger and resentment it really eats you up. And I've had many family members in the past that I could have hold grudges. I'm sure they could say the same thing about me. And by letting go, it, it allows so much healing. And had I not, I would not be in the situation I am right now, which is like this big open heart to just love everyone. And it's not always easy, of course. Right. And, and it, it, takes a lot to be sometimes the bigger person, but I think forgiveness is huge. Another healing process for me has been the writing process. And, you know, I think had I not found my grandfather's manuscript, had I not sat down and really like spent, I want to say years, I mean, it has been years of just thinking about it and going back and hashing the past out. I don't think I would be where I'm at right now. So writing is a huge form of therapy for me. And of course, I want to say obvious, the the obvious things like exercise and meditation and counting your blessings and gratitude. Those things are, are immensely helpful. I definitely appreciate you mentioning gratitude and just counting your blessings because I feel like that's all a part of the most important thing, which is a mindset shift, which I feel like is essential for us while we're dealing with something that I feel like no one has really dealt with before. It's requiring you to touch on those unhealed traumas, requiring you to reevaluate or bring up conversations that you may not want to have, especially with the family members roughness I would say it's a a rough history that may not have started with you but it's generational 
This episode is sponsored by my new book called Seeing Life Through a Different Lens, a survivor's memoir on overcoming adversity with resilience. You can visit ZakiraNayar.com. So how do you feel about this time of the year and how they can help or even hurt family relations? Well, God, I mean, there's so much to talk about. But back to one thing you just said is that, like, you know, if this is a difficult time. And if you can not only just allow that forgiveness and see your family members, right, because a lot of us are in tight quarters right now. We're living with family members 24 hours or maybe maybe we are separated, but we want to stay in touch with our family members. I, I think we have to find compassion, not just for ourselves, but for our family members, right? All, as you said, all those past traumas, it's all coming out. And, and I, I think that, I, I mean, I consider myself a, an internal optimist. I really do think that we are going to get through this stronger, more compassionate, more understanding. We're going to see what is most valuable after all this, right? Like right now we realize what's most valuable. Well, it's our family. It's our health. Those are the things that matter most. And so it, it's kind of this time that we're in right now. I, and I'm actually working on an essay that I'm going to put out next week. Right. It's we're we're approaching Easter. We're approaching approaching Passover. It's like the time of rebirth. And and if we can look at this time as like a reset where everything is kind of like maybe opening our eyes to say, like, we're we're a global community. We're in this together. Right. We need to work together. Right. There, there's bipartisanship happening in, in D.C. Maybe this is nature's way of, of like getting us all collectively to look at things differently so again that's my optimism that's of course there's a lot of scary news happening right now I mean I'm trying not to go down that rabbit hole believe me I watch the news every single day probably too much but I am I'm looking for those constant silver linings I'm feeling like I'm connecting in some way to my family members and my friends more than I would have had this not happened, right? We're having group Zoom sessions with family members that ne- would normally never all be together. So I have to believe that this is a reset. I agree. I agree with it being a reset. Um, I especially know that history does repeat itself, but every time it does, there is something slightly different. And I feel like this time around is definitely a reset. It's definitely of I've seen the jokes and the memes across the web of this is basically mother nature saying, go to your room, stay in there until you figure out what you were doing wrong. (laughs) So how do you feel about that quote, I would say, but also in regards to boundaries? Oh, interesting boundaries. Well, I, you know, um, I think that it's important to know that you can say no, right? It's important to know what works for you. And I think that, that, that classic old airplane saying, you know, like put the oxygen mask on yourself first so that then you can take care of your child is, is part of those boundaries. If you are not mentally in a place where you are feeling good, then you cannot give to others. So I, it, it Self care is not selfish. I think we have to take care of ourselves. I think it's, it's not, like I said, it's not selfish to look out for yourself as number one. In fact, it's very generous because then you are able to give more of yourself. So I've never had an issue with boundaries. Um, I'm a very giving person that loves to cook for people and, and, you know, I'm always checking up on everyone, but you know, as a mom, as a daughter, I, I have to take care of myself first. So what that might look like is exercising or or making sure to get enough sleep or making sure to, you know, do things that bring me joy. Do you have any other, we're coming up on the end of the episode, but do you have any other tips I would say hands-on tips that people can implement right now while they have time <laughs> to improve their self-care, their mindset, and their mental health? Yeah, I, I mean, there are many, and I understand 
everyone's probably feeling a little bit stir crazy and cooped up, but you also have to just be so grateful for technology. There's so many streaming services for whether it's to meditate and, and it, you may need a moving meditation, which means like maybe doing some yoga um, or maybe a moving meditation means going on a walk. And as we now in Los Angeles, we've been told that when we go out, we need to be wearing masks. So starting today, when I go on my walks, I'm going to start wearing a mask. Um, but, yeah, there's so many things that you can do to take care of your mental health. And maybe that means setting a schedule of like a week in advance, putting things in the schedule, like, which is what we're starting to do on Friday nights. We are doing a Shabbat dinner with four other families and we're putting in the schedule as something to look forward to. Um, whether that is, um, you know, making sure Monday through Friday that you get up at a, at a certain hour and actually get dressed at, to be productive. Um, whether that means Eating healthy, and I know it's a little more challenging now, but getting creative. Maybe, maybe you start a garden. Maybe uh, there's, I, I don't, you know, every community is going to be different, but I'm sure there are ways to make sure that you aren't just eating complex carbohydrates because we know that our diet and nutrition is really important to our mental health. Oh, Staying thank you for mentioning that. All of the- which one? <laughs> About the nutrition, because I feel like that's the one thing, oh, at least yeah. in my mind, that people are neglecting. They will go to the go-to store, buy so many snacks, but what about the vitamins and the fruits and the veggies? Right, exactly, exactly. And that may mean, like, you know, like I said, like, this is our victory garden moment. Maybe that means growing some pots on your balcony of tomatoes and, and getting some of the seed sets you know, you can order those in or maybe maybe self-care looks like doing a new hobby. Maybe it's it's deciding like, OK, I'm going to learn how to draw and watching one video a day and attempting something or taking online classes. My dad is 77. He just told me he's about to start taking his first online classes. I, you know, so it doesn't mean we have to be idle. We, we can we can maybe potentially be more productive. You know, I and I realize this is a time that is so anxiety provoking. There's so much uncertainty. But I, again, this is where the eternal optimism comes in. I do believe collectively as humans, we're going to come out this stronger. I, you know, I obviously we need a vaccine. I I pray that comes sooner than later. But I I just I, I have to believe and, and my heart breaks for anybody who has lost somebody from COVID-19 or, God forbid, is sick with it right now. Um, but I do. I just have to believe that we will get through this. And so remain positive. Look for those silver linings. Absolutely. I love those tips. Those are very, I feel like even I can implement them right now if I have not. I feel like we are, again, on the same vibration because I do believe that uh, t- together we go further. And of course, there's the whole thing on, um, social media about stay home or stay strong and things of that sort, but just allowing technology because I'm all about supporting science, technology, engineering, and math. Just technology itself will be more helpful than harmful in a way to bring people together. And it's allowing more people to consider, in my opinion, consider nature a bit more because the parks are being abandoned now, but that means that because the parks are abandoned, the people who don't care for clouds can actually go out and enjoy nature. So it's there, there's a, a few silver linings in this situation that I feel because I, too, am all about uh, optimism. <laughs> oh, I love it. We're kindred spirits. OK, so where can everyone else find my kindred spirit on the web? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> okay. So my website is right now, Rachel, and that's right with a W, W I, sorry, hello, W R I T E, Rachel, R I C H E L. So it's right now, Rachel, um, dot com. And I'm also right now, Rachel at gmail dot com. You can find my website. I'm sorry. You can find my podcast, Dear Family, on every platform. I'm on Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn and Twitter at right now Rachel perfect I love it now I gotta ask you this now maybe I'll share a story first 
uh, towards the end of last year, even after my book was released, I ended up doing a podcast episode with my mom. And after that podcast episode, my mom sent me an idea of how about you write your father's story? So then, of course, there's me and my older sister. We are two of his his daughters from, you know, from that came from him genetically. Then, you know, I talked to her about it and she actually studied journalism in school. And at first she was like, OK, why are we doing it? And then I kind of implemented. I'm like, OK, well, he talked about his story all the time. He has an amazing story. People who know him consider him very amazing. Why not we, you know, help to get it out there? She was like, great. I'm excited about it. And so we're, we're beginning the process slowly but surely, but I already know that it's going to be a healing process for both me and my sister because technically, legally, we are half sisters, but she's still my sister. I'm like, she's like my only sister on my dad's side. And then, of course, healing for my dad as well because it's going to require him to do some serious reflecting. So I say that in asking you of when do you think we will be able to live through the life and walk through your father's shoes with his story being finally out there? So this story is really my grandfather's story. Yeah, oh, yes, the grandfather. Um, but I mean, yeah. it's genetical. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My grandfather. You know, I hope soon. I have to say it's been kind of put on the back burner, but it is such a passion for me. And as you know, because you're a writer, writing never completely feels done. Like even though you published your book, I'm sure you could go back and look at it and find other things you would like to add and edit and write. So in a way, kind of this break from it has given me a little time to rethink some of it and and notice maybe what is most important and what needs to be added and what needs to be taken away. And and because it's a memoir, it can keep going on and on and on. So I, I don't have an answer. I, I hope sooner than later. Um, at this point, I, I would say my energies are being put into my podcast and my writing. But that is going my, my book, which is going to be called Dear Family. At one point, it was going to be called Inherited, but it's, it's going to be called Dear Family. And it's a family memoir and it spans five generations. I know it will come out at the right time. Well, we look forward to following along this, this journey of life. Oh, thank you so much. So honored to speak to you today. You are such a lovely young woman and it's so impressive. Thank you. I can say the same for you. <laughs> oh, thank you. Okay, well, I wish us all health, and that's both physical and mental health, and happiness and love. Thank you for listening to the Living Legacy Podcast. Be sure to subscribe, follow, and download so you don't miss the next episode. If you want to learn more, you can visit ZakiraNayar.com. That's Z A A K I R. A-H-N-A-Y-Y-A-R dot com. Do you have any suggestions on a topic you want to be talked about? Send me an email or leave them in a review. If you love this episode, be sure to share it with your friends.